today we're doing something different. Today, using another recording software, we're going to be telling you how to play Space Engine. This is part one out of, I don't know how many parts will there be, but I want to show you how you can get the simulator I use for my video, Space Engine. Well, spoiler alert, it does cost money for $30, so if you don't have $30, I guess you can have, I guess you can just leave, but... Who knows, if you do, and if you have $30, you can spend it on Space Engine. So, the first thing you have to do is search Space Engine on Steam. Right now, it is, right now, it is about $21, and it is, but it's, but its original price is $30. So, if you have $30, you can go, you can spend it. Alright, so, once you spend $30... You will get this pop up here, which says Space Engine. Click it right now here. It will launch the game, and as you can see, it will bring you up this pop up. This pop up is the is actually the loading screen and does not have any tabs on there, like those zero tabs, where it's located. And you have to wait until this bar reaches one hundred percent. Once I reach the menu screen, we'll find out. So, so peace then for now. So this is the menu screen. Let me turn off the sound for now because we don't need it right now. So this is this is the menu screen you will receive. Usually there's supposed to be sound, but I just turned it off because of copyright issues. But so you will get this. Continue you will get play or continue planetarium. There's two game modes. Planetarium and Flight Simulator. So Planetarium is the default game mode where you should just explore. And Flight Simulator is if you want to fly ships and stuff, which I'll tell you later. And this is the settings. And tools is if you want to use some stuff like video capturing. Yeah, there's actually a video capture system here. Exporting your skybox, edit your ships, edit your nebulas, edit planets, export planet textures, export planet ship, script, and high resolution screenshot. There is camera path, but it's only available for the pro version, which I sadly don't have. So now we're going back. So this is what you will expect if you get Space Engine. So you should click here to get into the game. Usually you spawn the solar system, so let's go here. And this is the, and that is the first part of this episode. So now, I will be showing you some basics of how, how it works. So you see, this, this area is known as the information box, and it contains a lot of, it contains some of the information of a celestial object. If you want more information of the celestial object, you have to click on the wiki, which is that eye icon here, and it will give you a info box, which is only available for real objects, like our sun. And it'll give you some more details of the of the object, like it like it shows the fate like it shows some stuff that that this does not contain. Like the like the internal structure. It's or it's more more stuff related to its orbits, like its eccentricity and and its type of orbit. But the sun does not orbit, so let's just use an example for Mercury. You can see it shows it shows the orbital eccentricity here, but it does not show it here because the wiki section gives you more details of of what it is. So make sure to click if on this eye icon if you think you don't have enough information of what a object is like Mercury, and you can see here. You know what this icon is? This is the universe map. Upon clicking it, which was selecting Mercury, it will give you Mercury. You can see here. And the best part is you can scroll up, which will zoom out, and then you can scroll up, you can scroll down to zoom out, scroll in to zoom in. So let's scroll. Up. If you can see, you can scroll out from Mercury to our entire to the inner solar system to our outer solar system. And here's the best part: if you want to find out what's the closest star to this object, you just have to go to the near stars. As you can see, the closest star that the star that comes first is 
is Proxima Centauri, which you all know is the closest star to our solar system, se second to Alpha Centauri, which is actually sl which is prox which is actually one star system. It turns out Proxima Centauri is actually part of Alpha Centauri. But it just, but it's just about more than like fifteen light years closer than Alpha Cent, than point one five light years closer to Al than Alpha Centauri is. And then as you continue zooming out, you can see some more stars like Sirius, Proicon, Epilus and Arandi, T Seti, Hakel eight seven sixty, and way more. And you can continue zooming out and see some more stars until, but eventually, as you zoom out further, the red, the lower rank, the lower spectrum stars will start disappearing, and only the high spectrum stars or big stars will start showing. So as you continue, you just scroll out. Eventually, you can see some big nebulas, which are these bright colored dots. These are nebulas. So if you see any colored, like very colorful dots that are very bright, you just remember this is nebulas. If you see any like blue or, or red, that's mostly blue main sequence stars or giant stars. So the best part is, as you, you can zoom out, you get our whole Milky Way galaxy. And you can see these big dots here. These are star clusters, which I'll get to that in part, in part which I'll get to that in another part. So, so the maximum zoom you can go is about 873 million light, year, million light years, and you get an entire interactive universe map. Meaning, if you can just you can just click on a random galaxy, and if you and I will tell you how you can get to other objects easier without traveling to them manually. So let's say you want to go to I don't know Sirius. So you have to all you have to do is click this icon here saying go to object. Click this, and it, would t and it will take three seconds to get here. Once you do, you may notice it's a binary system. And if you want to go to a specific object, you can actually see the browsing of the whole so of the system. And you can see, you can I'm just going to go to this white dwarf. As you can see, it will automatically get, give, off the give up the white dwarf star to you without having to click this. And then if you can just press this, you can just go to the white dwarf. You don't have to just manually go here, click over here. You have to go to find the star and click it. All you have to do is just bring up this browser. And when you click this, it will actually automatically point your selector to here, the Sirius A. So it will bring it up to you. So in the next part, I'll be teaching you how to use the star browser, which gives you this message. And I'll tell you in part two of this episode. So make sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more how-to videos and more stuff. I'll see you right later. Adios. And the outro is another cinematic 40 second of interstellar space.